The Breakfast Show 2020 on KBC English Service. I'm Bruce Weda. Weda is an advocate of the High Court of Kenya, published author and a board member of the Lake Basin Development Authority and a canon in the Anglican Church. Let's stay with Martha Karua a little longer, Weda. It is her and other high-profile civil society players like uh, former CJ Dr. Willy Mutunga who are sticking their necks out against BBI. First, here is the former Prime Minister speaking in Mombasa over the weekend. It's not aimed at watering down the provisions in our constitution, but improving on what we already have on the constitution. People's initiative cannot come from the state, cannot be organized using public resources. This is my address to young people. You have to realize that within 10 years you might not have a country. I've compared the constitution 2010 as a beautiful baby that all of us collectively gave birth to. But we handed over this baby to the <laughs> Dr. Willy Mutunga says we gave birth to a beautiful baby and handed it over to the dares, referring of course to the Miracle Baby Saga as an analogy. Mm. Do people like the former CJ and leaders like Martha Karua have the clout to mount an effective no campaign in the no, no, no. First you need money to hold a successful rally in um, Urupak. Yes. Even the public address systems will be about three, four million. It's not pretty cash. That's a loan. Then you have to organize. Then you also have to make sure. Make sure means you have to bring some people also. You have to make noise all over. It's not about a lot of seminars and a lot of English. That one comes when you are now proofreading or looking at the final document. Mm -hmm. Baba will come and say, and people say, Baba, it's over. Because we can pass it. So they need to change tack. They need to change. They have cloud, they have been cabinet ministers, they have been CJs. If they gave me half a billion shillings, I would, I would do the, the, the theatrics and you'll see uh, the, the thing gaining traction. So I think, um, uh, and then my Lady Mother Karwa, she lost a lot of clout mm. when you take into context her behavior at KICC in 2007. That took away a lot that she had produced. She had come out as a fighter, a strong mm -hmm. lady, a possible presidential material, good, focused, tough. But when <laughs> she participated in the theft of elections in 2007 and said, if this Jaluo is winning, let the country burn. She lost a lot. So when she talks, we are just looking more as at her, like, you know a jilted lady? Yes. Yes, that one. <laughs> <laughs> She's a great lady, wonderful senior counsel, respectable, honorable. Mm -hmm. But when she was in power, cabinet <laughs> minister, she became something else. And that is why when now she was passed over mm -hmm. for Uhuru, Uhuru was made... Um, the deputy prime minister and not her mm -hmm. she became very better another national leader who is opposed to the bbi process is the makweni governor dr kibuta kibwana and he has even sought the interpretation of the supreme court like you mentioned earlier on some matters which he explained in this interview with ktn yesterday and to change the constitution in a radical way and this is why we are arguing for two issues one of the issues being can you actually vote for 78 issues at once or should we vote for one issue at a time and the second one being can the government appropriate the popular initiative which is basically a, a citizen's initiative to change the constitution instead of doing that through parliament and a referendum so whether does the professor of law want Kenyan voters to decide on each one of what he calls the 78 issues separately? Is that even logistically possible? His argument is, is very sound. That mm -hmm. was my teacher, one of the leading professors in Africa. He also has credibility as good. Mm -hmm. And when he speaks, some of us listen because he's good. And he's also sincere. Mm -hmm. And he's not a thief. <laughs> and he's a work. <laughs> <laughs> what I can tell you is that when you are doing 78 issues, mm -hmm. you are almost doing an overhaul of the constitution. And that brings in other issues. Did, did we need a constitutional assembly mm -hmm. to do it? Well, how did you come up with the drafts? How did the idea come? Is it, uh, did we need to then look at each issue? Because mm -hmm. the 
correct position is you may agree with one yes and disagree with the other that is the reason why you say yes uh, we have no problem having 35 percent of money mm -hmm. going to the counties mm -hmm. agreed but we may have problems uh, introducing many seats like prime minister deputy prime minister all these things mm -hmm. disagreed same person so when you are told vote yes or not to mm -hmm. all this then you are also you have your your sovereignty mm -hmm. has been taken away you are forced but even before you reach what you vote for the question is how did they reach there was it a constituent, a constituent assembly or was it a popular initiative and then the right question that they're asking, can you use the popular initiative left for an inchi using government resources to amend the constitution? Mm -hmm. So the questions are <coughs> valid. And I can see the Supreme Court as this awaited. There will be somebody going to court saying, stay this, mm. stay the referendum process until all this are clear. So the legal part is still unclear mm -hmm. and uh, they need to just pray very hard that um, uh, Maraga goes. Because if Maraga was there, <laughs> I would have seen a court order barring these things, the IBC from com uh, continuing with the referendum until all these issues are hard and determined. More, uh, President Moy tried it and then there was the Njoya case mm. that then brought in now the process of constitutional assembly, the process. Otherwise, they also just wanted to do a Madhogodani amendment <laughs> like the one we are now doing. So those questions are valid constitutional questions that need to be addressed, agreed upon and finalized. Mm -hmm. But when Baba says we are in a hurry by Friday, I told you the signatures. We don't have a signature bank, so how do you know two million have been collected? <laughs> if they are being done in a book, and the books have not been returned, how do they know? <laughs> it is <coughs> because the signatures are there, whether they are collected or not, they are there, and they will be met. And why do you need four million instead of one million? Just in case people draw pigs. It is not <laughs> in case people draw pigs. It is F1 Jiko Jolly. <laughs> This is not my signature! To tell him, okay, remove that one of the Jiko. How many do we still have? <laughs> that is the How thing. many minus one? <laughs> so what are you talking about? We only need one million. We have three million, nine hundred and ninety-nine. Musi to let Please stop. That is like a defense. The three million will be a defense. Otherwise the signatures are there. One of the issues that the BBI report hopes to address is electoral violence and that issue of the 2007-2008 post-election violence has been front and center of recent events. In fact, the president used the launch of the BBI signature collection uh, to launch a severe attack on the director of the criminal investigations, DCI, George Kinoti, for apparently digging up that issue. Ebo kuchimbua makaburi nilisoma kwa gazeti juzi Wasifikiri wanacheza mimi siwezi kukubaliana na mambo kama haya Tumetoka huko na mambo haya tumezika katika kaburi ya sahau Wewe ujui ni shida gani You don't think before you talk, you don't think before you act You must always think before you do something Let us be faithful to the peace, to the stability, to the unity of this nation we discussed that very strange press conference by Mr. Kinoti, but who expected that he would get such a thorough dressing down from the president? Question is though, could Kinoti have been acting on his own or has he just been thrown under the bus by some dark powerful forces whose plans have backfired? Kinoti was acting on behalf of the deep state. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs> deep state. <clears throat> but it just turned out that this issue is hot. Mm and uh, you must be a fallback person. If he did not, if he acted out of order and the president is really angry with him, it would take the president less than a week to see Kinoti outside in the streets, <laughs> no longer DCI. When he continues being DCI, then you can read. You read. Mm -hmm. It's only that that issue is hot. These people are still alive. When you talk about the, the burning at Kiamba mm -hmm. Church, yes, the Luos will also be saying, Kondele, mm. Naivasa, we died, the Kikuns killed us, you know. Then you are opening a Pandora's box. 
that we had decided, let's forget. Let us remember as we grow. Let it be a let, let the blood that was shed be water the tree of freedom and national cohesion, not for retribution. Mm -hmm. Other than that, also, I said here, and I continue repeating, and I've always repeated, as long as you open postulation violence and you open issues of ISIS, the president himself is not out of the woods. Mm -hmm. Some Jogona <laughs> will just come up seeking to be paid money and witness protection because the, the ICC pays very well. They will take you to some foreign country in Switzerland where you live like a king. <laughs> some Jogona will say, I was there. I was there. And I was uh, deputy chair Mungiki. <laughs> Somewhere near, 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 near uh, I don't know where. And he will be taken. I write as a statement. And remember, ICC also, they don't just go to for the truth. Yes. They go for information which looks like truth. They tell you, oh, that's enough. Oh, you are there, eh? You remember? And you know, they'll not ask you, does he have a gap in the teeth or whatever? <laughs> no. They just say, well, they say, yeah. So he came and told us this. Then two witnesses. So the president himself is not out of the woods mm -hmm. because the case was never finalized. The deputy president. And the, so when we open these things, it negates the very essence of the handshake, the very essence of our country. It is a sad history. Nelson Mandela came out. And there were people who were saying, it is our turn to punch these kaburus. Mm -hmm. We want to deal with them. And he said, there is no future without forgiveness. That simple thing, that symbol that he was in for 27 years, mm -hmm. he came out and said, there is no future without forgiveness. Turned the course of South Africa. Government has refused to cooperate with the International Criminal Court in the case against lawyer Paul Gisheru, who had hoped for the official support to be released as the case continues. His lawyer John Haminwa says the state is duty bound to look after Gisheru's interest. What's your view on how this case is playing out at this early stage? Very sad. Somebody may have misled mm. Gisheru to go uh, surrender. Somebody must have also used pressure. Yet there's a court order. There's a court order that follows the warrants of arrest. I remember at the Nakuru rally, after Honor Boruto was released from ICC, the president himself vowed that no other Kenya will be surrendered to the ICC. No other Kenya will be tried. Again, he said it. That, I think, covered also people like Gisele. But I think in the in the political shenaniganism, and I think the quest to, to, to deal with the deputy president, people forgot. People forget. Even some of them, you tell them, let's not open the ICC one. If you want the deputy president dealt with, there are many ways. We can even go back to his chicken business. <laughs> he may have overcharged some people. <laughs> and we look for these people. And we the 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 the, the, the right complaints. He, he obtaining money by false pretenses, mm -hmm. giving a small chicken <laughs> at the price of a big one. We can get, but ICC, you don't touch it because you don't know either way. It, it can go either way because it's a political process. Just, just remember, Ocampo came here mm -hmm. and he said, "I'm selecting three three. Yes. Could it have been a miracle that uh, the, the two sides, the two warring sides? They produce three three. What kind of thinking is that? That that's not a legal thinking. That's not criminal responsibility. That's a, a political. We are fair. We'll take a few here, a few there. So it didn't matter who is being taken. They are just taking three. It didn't matter whether one side had more uh, suspects. So that is dangerous. And when it then decided to go, I hope he was not coerced. I hope he took that decision himself, so that when things become thick, he deals with it. But otherwise, it, would, it was wrong for him to leave the country. I would never want myself, any Kenya, to go back to the ISIS. We are capable of dealing with our problems. And since we are speaking about matters of justice, we may as well tackle the transition in the judiciary. And the Chief Justice last week made his final major remarks as he prepares for his retirement. It is clear there is a difference of opinion between me and you. But I want to assure you and the entire nation that I have nothing personal against you. Why would I want to fight you as some people are suggesting? I am a political and I hold no brief for any politician. The president has no residual legal power to question or reject the names recommended to him by a but to appoint them. The president cannot 
cherry pick from the list of no nominees. If that is allowed, ladies and gentlemen, the independence of the judiciary will be irreparably ruined and the presidential mischief and patronage in the appointment of judges will effectively be restored. Well, you reacted to the CJ on Facebook by saying, I love the courage of the man, but he lacked tact, so he was plain plain. In your view, how will history judge the Chief Justice David Maraga's tenure? When things settle down, Maraga will go on record as a courageous um, Chief Justice. He worked with a lot of courage. Uh, he, he will go down in history as a forthright Chief Justice. He was basically forthright. If you've made mistakes, they, they were minor mistakes. One of the most difficult things in the life of a Chief Justice or a judge, I have not been there but I know, is what we call courage. I've seen it even, even, even just not being, being with Baba. Mm -hmm. In Luland, you need a lot of courage. You need a lot of patience. You need to eat a lot of mboga because it is hard. It is tough. When elections come, they go to my house and they ban things. So now imagine facing, that, is, that was just Baba and I had government on my side, President Uhuru behind me, William Ruto behind me, all these people, and they still torment me. Now you have to face President himself. President himself. And then uh, on Raila, that he had nullified elections in favor, had also switched over. <laughs> now you needed a lot of... So he goes down as a very courageous Chief Justice. I don't agree with the decision to nullify mm. the presidential election. I think that was an overreach based on uh, not very sound legal principles that are well settled. But I think if you look at it, there mm. were entitled to the opinion that was their role, that was their function, and they did it, and the rest is water under the bridge. Mm -hmm. What I think the, the Chief Justice, uh, was, uh, his major flaw was he was tactless. He allowed the temperament mm -hmm. of, uh, generally, I'm not saying, uh, but <laughs> generally in my experience, the kissy <laughs> temperament. You know the kisses and the meros in this country, I hear their cousins, their temperament, if they hold a panga, they will not stop, they will cut him before they rest. They are not like the kikukanda who run away and wait at night to cut you. That's just a, a joke, by the way. So, he was tactless, he would come and speak in a tactless manner, he would react in a tactless manner. You don't have to say that, I will choose. Which state function to attend? Mm -hmm. Those ones you leave for yourself because you are a chief justice. Yes. They didn't give me Mercedes. <laughs> if it was a Lua, I would understand. I <laughs> said, yes. Denying a Lua Mercedes. Ah, oh, my brother, you can't do that. But he is kissy. Kissy people are not known to, to, to die for Mercedes or, or Vietz or Prados. So he didn't have to say that. Even if he was sulking inside the cell. But even with their salary, his salary, mm -hmm. he could buy his own and say, if you don't give me yours, I'll come with mine. So there are statements that were not befitting. There are statements that demonstrated tactlessness. Even the last speech, mm -hmm. President Uru, this is not personal. He's actually acknowledged there's a rift. There's no rift. There's but, simply no rift. He's only, you'd have, uh, you'd have caught, if I was writing his speech, I say, Your Excellency, the period we served together, I appreciate uh, this and that. There were times when we had departing opinions, different opinions, mm -hmm. but it was all for the sake of building the Kenyan nation. And I, I wish you well as you continue in this, and as I now take the second or the last phase of my life in this. I am ready and willing to serve a country in any capacity. I wish you all the best. Anytime you are stuck and you need me, feel free. Call me. I'm under. Uh, just like that, oration, uh, like uh, Obama would say, yes we can, he say, yes we can. <laughs> then he goes there and he's told things are not done that way, man. Keep quiet, this is not Kogelo, this is America. This next issue is also playing out in court. Governor Sonko is fighting back any attempts to impeach him by the county assembly. Yesterday, the court stopped the impeachment proceedings set for tomorrow after what had been a week of high drama. Yes, kwanzia saa hii tutakuwa tunaleta negotiation. Kama NMS na account wasikizani tunaleta. Lakini the leadership ambayo imekuwa inagawanisha lazima iende. Lazima tutawatoa. <laughs> we are saying we are not in any way supporting the impeachment of Governor Mike Sonko. They collected those signatures from Akamukunji we held before and the few that they were able to collect through coercion and duress could only amount to 17 members who are in support of Governor Sonko. So far we are 82. <laughs> We 
said we will not fight again. When the new speaker came in a new leadership, they promised that there will be no fight again. Regional Commissioner Bana Rashid Yakub, wacha kupotozo na majority leader. Nirafiki yako tunajua, waishimu wameenda pale kikatiba kukata yale mambo ambayo alikuwa ya mesemeka, hawakutaka sahihi zao zitumiwe kibadi. So the governor is not going down quietly, it's a game of numbers and he's rallying his troops and he has even reportedly dispatched some of them to Mombasa and confiscated their mobile phones. <laughs> Familiar script in Kenyan politics, whether will the governor survive? Oh yes, if he opens the pockets, pockets, Baba, you know now this other side, uh, this other side now, they, they have already gotten the chunk of the power, so they are going to sleep. Yeah. They have closed the passes. People have become more stingy now. <laughs> so when Governor uh, Sonko opens the passes, it becomes difficult. You have heard the lady say that our signatures were collected at a Kamkunj yes. by coercion. Well, what exactly do you think? Were they locked up in prison? <laughs> they just sign here. And then there could have been exchange of uh, good things, Christmas gifts. So as long as Governor Mike Mbuvi Sonko <laughs> is in charge and has opened his pockets, it will work. Secondly, the new administration led by our big brother, General, mm -hmm. I don't think he's allowing trickling down effect to the MCs. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt. He has brought military style of speeches. That has his own political issues. So that strengthens Zongo. Zongo. But looking at it, uh, I would say, look, we have taken enough from Zongo. Mm -hmm. We let's not appear like we are sadists. If we just want a signature, uh, I think it can be called the minister can call him, his excellency president can call him. Well, Sunko is is a man on edge. Mm -hmm. le, le, we have taken powers from him, we have taken authority. We have now left him with the Askari uniform <laughs> and the city board. Surely it, <laughs> and the lions. <laughs> and the lions. We, to, we, are, we allowed him to pick them. Yeah, if, if they were not picked, they are in the he can be given. Yes. So uh, I, I think we, we should stop there. Uh, we, he's also a human being. He got a lot of votes and mm -hmm. he was one of us in Jubilee mm -hmm. campaigning with His Excellency President Uhuru Begai Kenya and the Deputy President. We have taken enough from Songo. Mm -hmm. Therefore, let us let him in peace. If he refuses to sign something, President just call him the way he signed the main thing. Say, mm -hmm. Songo, kunyo akitu mm -hmm. then sign for the Nairobi to go. Then he can tell the President, I also want this favor, this favor. This favor, if it is within the law, mm -hmm. it goes. That is how. Let's coexist. Let's the handshake flow <laughs> every corner. Well, thank you very much, uh, Weda, <coughs> for your time on the big conversation this morning. That's our regular analyst, Ambrose Weda, who helps us get a deep understanding of the social, political, and legal events of the week gone by. Ambrose Weda is an advocate of the High Court of Kenya, published author, and member of the Lake Basin Development Authority Board, where there is also a canon in the Anglican Church. Just to remind you that a podcast of this conversation will be available on www.kbc.co.ca. The Breakfast Show. 2020 on KBC English Service.